Hello everybody, it's Rain here, and I'm coming back at you with the next lesson, lesson four here, where today we're going to be discussing the boards. We previously briefly mentioned the factions when we were talking about the mechs in particular, so if you haven't checked that out, check that out. And I'm going to assume that you've actually just seen the other ones, so when I say things like type one, type two, when I talk about the benefits of certain actions, I might briefly bring them up, but generally I'll assume that you know what I'm talking about. I've talked a lot about what I think are the best and the worst factions and boards, and today we're dividing them into four tiers. There's nothing more to say, let's dive right into it. In the first tier, top tier, there's only one board, and that is the patriotic board. So let's go over why the patriotic board is simply the best board in the game. We're going to be talking about the boards going through them step by step to kind of have a more long form discussion. Some of the boards you might not understand something if I don't bring it up, so we will discuss it. First off is this move action. This move action is great. Most, not all, Crimea and Rusfade are exceptions, but the rest of the factions need to take an early move in order to get onto their village, wherever that is. So being able to trade for oil and get an upgrade as you move into position to start producing is a nice little thing to do. It's not the perfect move action, but it is very, very good at setting you up. Only need to take two upgrades too, so the two cost is very, very welcome. A lot of the boards that we'll see later have a flaw in terms of the cost of their upgrades, so making it two is excellent. You even get a coin back for it. Totally unnecessary, but hey, you'll take it. And we're gonna discuss the amount of coins you get with this board too, later. Next up is this bolster and deploy action, and at first it looks a bit like expensive, because of the uh, four cost. Um, you are getting two upgrades with this board always, so this cost can go down to two. Typically it'll hover at two to three, and this one will be the other one. So, and once you get bolster power, look at this action. Bolster for three power, deploy a mech, get three coins. Plus, if you're going for enlists, which you do with this board, you get four coins per, per mech. Um, really insane amount of coins, though obviously you're giving one up for some power in order to get your 16 power star. No biggie. I like stars. <laughs> Next up is this trade and build action, and let's just be real, this action sucks. You take the trade action early on when you need to upgrade, or when you're short on resources to deploy your first mech, or whatever's going on. You'll, ta you'll take a few trade actions, but mostly this board just plays so well with five workers that you don't trade as often as you do with other boards. A reason why this board obviously does well with more produce actions than you're allowed to in Type 2 gameplay is because like this action is something that you don't typically do at the very, very start. You did with Crimea Patriotic in terms of getting your enlists out super, super quickly. Usually your upgrades and your mechs are such a high priority in the early game that you don't typically produce into enlists early. So that means that you're going to want to take more produce actions later because this produce and enlist combination, we've discussed the combination of deploying and enlisting very, very strong. Even if you have to deploy your first mech before you can get an enlist out, if you get deploy coins, then you yourself are going to be making five coins back as a bonus, which is four short of buildings. So assuming that either one of your neighbors can deploy a mechs, and we've talked about how good mechs are, you can actually get an equal or greater bonus to your bonus coins than um, buildings allow for in terms of full structure bonus, which is really, really insane, especially considering that buildings also give, or enlists also give you two popularity, two power, two cards, a supply of combat cards that is useful throughout the game, potentially more popularity and more power depending on what your neighbors are doing. So let's see how many coins this board gives you. Two upgrades, two coins, uh, four mechs, we'll say three without deploy coins because deploy coins is a high priority if not the top priority. So. I believe the total was 29 coins that this board gives you, but let me count it up again real fast. So, 27 coins this board gives you naturally. It gives you four enlists, which can give you more coins. It's, it's an absurd number of coins. Just think about how like a lot of your scythe games go, and just like think about how you sit, feel sitting down there with like 35 coins. It's insane. 
So the Patriotic Board 5 Worker Comp is just the best thing to be doing with most things in the game. Um, this board is not balanced, it does everything incredibly well, it ignores the thing that you really don't care about, and has good synergy and just great gameplay. So uh, typically you'll find that the Type 1 gameplay, as I've talked about, is Patriotic just because of this board strength. The amount of coins you get, 27 natural coins within lists, it's just way, way too strong compared to the other boards. Alright, maybe not. I, I have fun playing Patriotic, so maybe I shouldn't say too strong because it's always nice to high roll once in a while. But that is the sole possession of the top tier. Now we're moving on to the second tier. In the second tier, I have three boards, and they are probably not the boards you're expecting for the most part. You might expect one or two of these, but I think at least one of them is going to throw you off. And next I'm going to talk about the other Type 1 board. Um, these are all, again, very similar in terms of their power. So we're going to talk about the last Type 1 board here before we move on to Type 2. Because Mechanical is basically just patriotic if patriotic was fair. <laughs> so let's talk about this board. All right. The biggest problem with this board is this, this trade and upgrade action with no coins attached and three cost. It's a problem. You need two upgrades in the early game, and the three costs on your upgrades means that it's going to take you longer to get your upgrades than simply trading and upgrading. Um, since you're only getting two upgrades, since we've already discussed upgrades, diminishing returns, long time to use, and in addition, this board just isn't interested. Zero coins attached, two upgrades, and call me out. The nice thing is, once you're done with this action, this is a perfect dump of things to just not have access to for Type 1 gameplay. Because you're taking more produce actions for resources this way, you don't take as many trade actions, no coins here, you don't need any more upgrades, this is just... After you get your two upgrades, just dump it in the trash and never consider it again. The rest of the board might look a bit familiar to you. We were talking about bolster and produce attached to deploy and enlist for Type 1 gameplay very strong. Allows you to do this and this and this and this and this and get 16 power star, 4 max, 4 enlists, a bunch of coins. This one has less coins than Patriotic already, ignoring the no coins for upgrades. You're already getting one less coin per mech. Other than that, I mean, it's just going to mean you end up with like 25 coins or something. I, I mean, depending on the game state, of course, like Patriotic and Mechanical can verge anywhere like 23 to 35 coins, but mechanical is definitely going to be on the lower end of that. Losing a coin per mech is a pretty big deal, especially since it's tied to that bolster action, and sometimes you actually, with the patriotic board, have some extra steel, and you can take another bolster action and get 16 power, as well as picking up four coins, which is not nothing, you know? <laughs> like, that's, that's a nice deal. So, what else is good about this board? This upside here is actually really nice. The uh, move attached to build with two coins, you can consider it, it, it's a mid and late game upgrade over the patriotic build. Two coins is obviously better than one. The buildings have more scaling as you go further into the game, so potentially moving on to an encounter and picking up some wood, you can easily follow up um, that move with the builds, <clears throat> like pay two dollars, gain 33 resources, or pay two dollars, gain four wood, all the, like, you know the ones I'm talking about. There, there are encounters where you can get wood here and build into like a monument, or if you really need a mine, sometimes, I, I don't think you really build a mill very often with mechanical, but if you get an early enough building, you might actually be able to, to, um, do that to some efficiency. What else is there to talk about with this board? Not much. Um, it's just a balanced version of Patriotic, which inherently makes it pretty fun to play for me. I really enjoy the Patriotic game style. I think Patriotic is just the best, but this comes in a nice second, especially if there's no Patriotic. The next two boards we're going to talk about are the top two Type 2 boards, and they are boards that... Uh, one of them I didn't like, and one of them I did like, but I couldn't explain it until I've learned more about Type 2. So, let's talk about 
probably the best type 2 board. And that is the Militant board, an expansion board from Invasions of Afar. All right, this board is crazy. It's so much different from every other board in the game. This is the only board that I get one upgrade and stop with typically, and that upgrade is so strong that I really don't care. So let's remember the key features of Type 2 gameplay. More move actions. You want to get your mechs out for ideally for board presence and oftentimes if you're playing any base faction you're going to absolutely need speed even if you don't go mechs you need speed so we've already discussed how strong mechs are so more move actions mechs are a priority more trade actions than you're used to and less produce actions let's look at this board and examine it with that lens in mind so first off is this bolster and upgrade action. As we said, we want to get one upgrade for the entire game. This upgrade has no coins attached, has three initial costs. We discussed something just very similar with the mechanical board, but the mechanical board was getting you resources to enable those early upgrades and also a trade action that you dump later. This on the other hand actually is fairly comparable to the mechanical upgrade because it's a bit of a pain in the ass. However, you only need one upgrade for the entire game and while you do it, you get a couple combat power, which allows you to have more board presence as you spread throughout the board. Also very useful because you're gonna basically always be going for mech with this board. Even if you're like Togawa Militant, I would still recommend for mech. And we're gonna get to that in just a second. So having the extra combat power doesn't hurt. Having the upgrade is important. And then you just barely consider this for combat power if you're desperate. Next up is the best action on this board and type 2 gameplay tells you why it's we were talking about more move actions and mechs are a priority this is a move action so your single upgrade by the way is always move action and cost of mechs so once you get that this is a triple move to a two cost mech with three coins attached really strong you can also consider the fact that this board often does get some amount of enlists. Some enlists are powerful and deploy coins is very powerful, especially with the militant board. But we'll discuss that later. So this is three to four coins on your move action for a deploy. Incredibly strong. The triple coin attached to the move action as well gives a lot of value to encounters. Once you have this upgraded to two, if you pick up like a two steel or any any ability to get two steel that you didn't have, and you can just translate that into a an upgrade in golds compared to what that steel would have been on its own, or potentially a mech and an upgrade in golds, depending on if you have your mechs out already. So this action is insane. It's really, really ridiculous. It's just the thing that really holds this board together. Next up, produce and build attached to one coin. Not a great action. You basically aren't going to take a lot of produces. That's just the, the way you play militant, the way you play type 2 in general is just like this produce action gets you up to eight workers, and that's basically it. And Militant Board especially is very good at the four produce style of gameplay, which I'll be discussing a little bit in more depth later on when I discuss produce actions in Type 2, which I think is going to be the next video. So stay tuned. I'll have that up probably just following this video like I did for the first batch. So you can check that out. I mean, you don't go buildings with this board like ever. So this is just to produce to get up to eight workers, which fills a role. So moving on. It's a nice action to dump later, similar to trade actions with type one gameplay. Moving on is the trade action here attached to enlist for two coins. Really nice action. It's actually something that I consider going two upgrades just so I can like reduce the cost of this so I can get uh, potentially four enlists with this board sometimes. It depends on the situation, depends on my faction. But trade is something that you do more often with type 2 gameplay. We just talked about that, bring it up one more time because I'm repetitive. Helps ingrain the ideas, I think. Enlists and deploy, good combination. Already talked about the, that a billion times. And it's attached to the actions that you take more of with type 2 gameplay. So this is just, I'm, in my opinion, a lot of coins here. A lot of strong ability to play type 2, decent resource production as you play type 2, which is something that you don't always get. Biggest flaw with this board is definitely the fact that the bolster is not incentivized like most boards are, especially base game boards, 
You, you expect to see bolster tied to three coins. So bolster is normally encouraged, which helps you get some board presence. But this, this board typically just gets two power plus whatever they start with and the two power from an enlist at some point. And that's their combat power for the game. And actually combat power is pretty overrated if you're not getting 16. Hovering around here is just fine. Even hovering around here I've seen in some games. Very game dependent on how important that is. Most games, and also faction dependent of course, if you're Togawa or Saxony, combat power is a problem. <laughs> just say that much. Um, but yeah. Um, excellent board. Even with these factions, it's still nice. It's just a wonderful board. And the last one in the second tier, one that you probably weren't expecting, it's the other great Type 2 board. And that is Engineering. Engineering's been rising in my ranks heavily as I've been playing more and more. Engineering is just an exceptionally strong board for Type 2 gameplay. We'll cover that now. First is one of the cool things about this board. Produce upgrade to two coins. Not bad at all. In fact, this is exactly what I would want it to be in terms of if I can think of an ideal action for type 2. Because you, you take your produces early, you want your upgrades early, and once you get two upgrades, you're pretty much done with it. What it enables is very, very nice. Basically every faction has access to early oil. Exceptions are Crimea and Polania. Every single other one has access to early oil. So being able to trade produce, trade produce into your two upgrades, move and bolster, and double cost on buildings is typically what you do with this, or at least what I do with this. Once you have that move action upgraded, you actually use that move action upgrade to move off of oil. So very, very nice. Get your two upgrades out as you get up to five workers, and then you move, and then get up to eight workers efficiently while getting the extra resources that you can. And then you just never take this action again. Once you get up to eight workers, you're just done. Of course, it's that way with every Type 2 board, but it's doubly so, like you get to get the upgrades out. And remembering that Type 2 games are typically emphasized by a single star in terms of bottom row actions in these first four. We like these coins being attached to something that we don't have to complete, but we do have to get. So these coins are actually really beneficial. Do not underestimate that. This is where this is where we want the two coins. Next up is this trade and deploy action. And this is the big weakness of the board, is the mechs on this board kind of blow. Sometimes you do need to get a mech out. I mean, usually you need to get a mech out. Most factions need to get a mech out. Togawa Engineering is the exception. You don't need to get a mech out with this because your mechs are not essential to your gameplay. You typically will get a mech if there's no Crimea in the game at the very least, but other than that, you could you get one mech with this board and then you basically stop. Next is the thing that makes this board so great. That's this bolster and build action. Really awesome action. Once we have it double upgraded, this costs a single wood, so you need four wood total to get all your buildings out. Exceptionally good with type 2 gameplay where you're taking less produce actions, so only needing four resources to complete that is really, really nice. Helps supplement for the fact that this costs three and you're going to be trading for oil producing and all that in the early game, so trade produce, trade produce. Three coins attached to the building. If you can complete the full structure bonus, except for this one, of course, you'll, you'll get nine coins. This one, you'll get six. So there's a lot of coins in this board that's that's kind of subtle. You can actually often get the 16 power star as well, as we were talking about, since you're spamming this bolster action, bolster is encouraged. Frankly, once this costs one, <laughs> and you have like maybe an extra wood or something, it's, it's thrilling to just, you know, bolster and deploy, or get the coins transitioned. Really, really strong action just really really broken action frankly biggest flaw of it is obviously the difference between buildings and mechs is that mechs can enable combat stars and can enable more control of the board whereas buildings just give you extra territory as long as nobody messes with you and obviously you have less control over that um, but the difference between mechs and buildings in type 2 gameplay is very very minimal You'll see the biggest distinction in mechs and buildings when you're playing type 1 gameplay because type 1 just doesn't do buildings, and that's a flaw you'll see with one of the boards to come. However, for this board in particular, just focusing on buildings, getting your two upgrades early, getting a lot of coins, 
for comparable to most other type 2 boards, excellent. And last but not least, because this was least, is the uh, move and, and list action tied to one coin. Not bad at all, actually, frankly. The move is obviously something you'll be doing a lot of in Type 2 gameplay, and it sucks that the bottom row isn't like hugely incentivized like it is with Militant. However, if you can pick up one of those like three resource things we were talking about, being able to enlist this popularity gain or deploy coins is not bad at all. Single enlist is has a lot of strong options in terms of either board presence, victory points, in some sense, you just have to have good planning, and your first enlist is obviously going to be your best enlist. So, I mean, this board is great. Uh, it's one that I initially dismissed as one of my bottom two boards in the game, but that's because I played type 1 every single game. Once you learn type 2, the engineering board becomes an excellent, excellent board, and definitely worthy of being in the same tier as Militant and Mechanical.